bit nervous though because like I know that they might try to spin it in different ways. Yeah, it's ABC News and they usually do a lot of like, you know, behind the scenes investigative journalists and journalism stuff. They're talking about the rental crisis, people struggling obviously paying their rent and aspect of it, but they're also wanting to get the side of the, the landlord, so it had the other side of the equation. And I've like even provided them all the evidence because like an article came up recently basically saying, oh, well, you know, Eddie's been, here's an example of this investor with all these properties and he's, you know, jacked up all his rents, which isn't the case. I think they're in the band behind me, the news people. Hello there. I've emailed them and text them evidence so if they try to spin it, like they'd be lying literally. I've sent them evidence of like 10 of my properties, which they're all under rented. I've sent them evidence of lease agreements and the rental statements. Being the problem for, you know, housing affordability, having 78 properties while others are, others are struggling. How do you feel about that? Well, I actually under rent all my properties from day one and I've provided you that evidence. I myself grew up in housing commission, struggling, single mum on a pension, her only source of income. When my mum was on a pension, the bank won't loan people money on a pension. So they can't actually buy a house. So the millions of people that are on a pension, it's a 10 year wait for government housing. You take away the actual investors that'll rent to them, they're gonna be on the street. And that's what pretty much almost happened to myself and my mom. We lived in West Sydney, couldn't afford the rent. She went on the housing commission wait. It took over 12 years to get a housing commission rental. Now, if we didn't have an actual property that we could rent normally, then we would have essentially lived on the street. They're also interviewing other like struggling tenants and things like that that have had their rent put up you know people would say unfairly none of my tenants so they're interviewing tenants then there's going to be this segment whenever it comes out the tenants you know that are struggling to pay the rent that negative kind of story and then they're probably going to throw me in there and be like well this guy owns 78 properties he's part of the problem like, it's like no i'm actually under renting a lot of my properties i grew up in poverty myself so i know what it's like to be in that situation a few moments later Work at Macca's. So I saved literally from like when I was like 14 to 18. People try to wait, let's say two years and not do the LMI. The market's jumped up by 20%, like you just kind of shot yourself in the foot. Like you're trying to save faster than the market's growing. Doing LMI, like I've done LMI, on, like I've never done 5%, which you can do, but I've done many 10% and now I can't do 10% anymore because after a while the banks will let you do 10%. When you're getting started, 10 or 5% is very achievable. Uh, name is Eddie Deline, spelling is E double D I E D I L L E E N. The property managers put the property back online for rent and they do what they call comparable market analysis. It was previously rented for 450 as an example. The property manager sees everything's even running for like 550, you know, 600. And you put it up to below market rent because to me it's also more important to get someone in there quickly and I've always generally put stuff under so it's the best kind of bargain out there in the market so literally you know, I'd have more applications more tenants that are actually open to that and therefore get a tenant in quicker maybe yes $50 a week less but you're getting it rented that day instead of waiting two weeks which will cost you an extra more than fifty dollars i've heard stories where you know uh, rents have been pushed up by 40 50 percent in some cases which is which is absolutely crazy or even double in some cases so to me on average which i'd say would be even be on the high side 10 to 15 percent that the rents have gone up it's severely under and i'm always more than happy to share the exact you know the rental statements and the lease agreements and you know rental appraisers to show that i do under rent the properties because it's, it's more about you know, that consistency, keeping the tenants in there. <laughs> I didn't know if you were laughing or dropping. While interest rates have increased and they, over time, the last 20, 30, 40 years, studies have shown and graphs have shown that actually rents have increased over time. Personally, with the strategy, you know, buying copies that already have a high cash flow from day one, like the increases haven't affected my personal portfolio at all. And that's because I've planned for it from day one. When I first started investing, the interest rates were seven and a half percent. They're even more than what they are now. So I started investing with that kind of rate of, of the interest rates. You know, buying a property as an example, it has a 9% rental yield. If, the, if that's 9% rental yield that I'm starting off with from day one, and let's say I bought property three years ago when the interest rates were 2% as an example. So nine, the gap is 7% they'd come up to you know six or, or more percent, but I was still at a nine to begin with. So I still had that two, three percent buffer to pay for additional costs and expenses. So that's where if you are, you know, 
buying an investor property, you've got to do your due diligence. You've got to be really, you know, focused on cash flow as well, because you can't just, you know, you buy a property that's significantly underperforming and then try to jack up the rents because it's not how to do things. It's, you, you've got to be more strategic about it. These rents mainly have only gone up because the property went vacant. Like the market was already at that price point. So yes, the rents have gone up, you know, 10 to 15%. That's because the property was vacant. It's not like I've jacked up the rates on existing tenants or anything like that. So the, the main rental increases that have only happened is because the tenants moved out for whatever reason. Is this significantly under-rented? Absolutely still to this day. I do whatever I can to keep the good tenants in there. Always open to negotiation on, on rents. And to me, it's a, having a win-win situation. And again, all of my properties, I would say are under-rented, which I can provide all the physical evidence that 77 of those are investment properties under rented i think that when we first get to this part of the interview hearing the phrase under rented at the start yeah might maybe confuse people yeah i just worry that you know like it's going to go the opposite direction people are going to think oh you know it's could go directly to that <laughs> negative but we're like literally they're all under rented. So like to me, it's very important to have that message across because I don't want people to think I own 77 properties and I've you know put the rent when I haven't done that at all. Great. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. What did you do at Macca's read front of house or back of the house? Uh, both really. Oh, yeah. I started yeah. off um, I think it was in the register. Yeah. Yeah, and then a drive through and then in the back, and then yeah. I became like assistant manager pretty quick and it was, it was a poor job. <laughs>